Cosmic moments. <laughs> the joy that we greet the hymns of Pentecost again this time of year. What a revelatory and glorious thing it is to hear our Heavenly King for the first time after several months. And standing for that prayer as we waited for the coming of the Holy Spirit. A great blessing for us to be sung in our midst again. Many of you have heard the story before. I know some of the other priests have told it, but it's always worth hearing again. The story of the Desert Fathers when Abba Lot goes to Abba Joseph and he tells him, Father, I, I fast, I keep vigil, I go to the services, what else must I do? And Abba Joseph puts out his hands in the air and flames come from his fingers and he says, If you will, you can become all flame. And that really is what the spiritual life is about, to become all flame. We too should seek to become all flame, and that flame being the Holy Spirit. Of course, in the passage of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear about tongues of fire being sent on the Apostles. In the Lord's words, we hear about living water, both of these images being used. The Lord says, He who thirsts, let him come to me and drink. You notice one of the operative words there. He says, let him come. He doesn't compel. He doesn't force. He doesn't manipulate. He invites. He asks us to come unto him. And if we don't come unto him, of course, we don't receive that living water. So he does seek first us to desire to love him, to make the efforts that he requires to love him. The people of Israel had to go to the Red Sea first and be willing to cross before they could come across and be saved. They had to be willing to come across the desert for many years before they could walk into the Promised Land. But they did indeed come. And they were led by a pillar of fire, that image of fire again. We hear images throughout Scripture of fire. A fire that is guiding, a fire that is purgative, a fire that it's touching the lips of Isaiah and the coal. We desire to have this type of fire. We also hear the type of fire that burns. We all know ourselves that fire can create great damage rather quickly and destroy great swaths of land and homes. It can also be used not only to prepare our food, but to keep us warm, really to help sustain life. It is the same with the image of the living water. The water can not only allow the people of Israel to go through, but it can destroy the people of the Egyptians as well. They were pursuing them. Water can drown, water can quench thirst and sustain life. It is absolutely necessary. And these two images are really images that we have of God. Because God too is there. It can be our total destruction if we reject Him and do not come unto Him. It can be absolute life for those of us who embrace Him as that living water as that purifying and glorious fire, that uncreated light that sustains life. But the Pharisees themselves were too hard-hearted and did not want to come. This was not the Jesus that they wanted. They send out their officers first to seize him. And the officers, being workers of theirs, being simpler people in this case, come back and they say, why have you not seized him? He said, we never heard any man speak as this man. Of course, they're furious by this. They're not warmed in heart, they don't desire to come to him, they say, are you also deceived? But it is they that are deceived. Their hearts are not ready to receive what Christ is offering them. If you think of this passage here, this was at the feast, and the people were staying around in tabernacles, the people were ready for the feast, and this is the desert dry land as we know of Israel, and these people themselves knew the value of water living in this area. They greatly knew the value of water. The same as the Samaritan woman, it was a great value to have that water, to make that effort to go down and grasp this water. And the Lord offers them living water that they will never need to drink again from. This must have been an amazing statement for somebody to speak that boldly. To come to me and I will give you living water, making him far more than just a regular man. But do we come to that living water? Do we act as the officers or do we act as the Pharisees? Later on, Nicodemus says the same thing. Nicodemus believed him, but not quite being bold enough to speak out yet. We should hear this man first. 
Their reaction is, are you also from Galilee? Like he's defending one of his own. The Lord promises to walk in his light, that fire of his light, of his Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit which sustains life. That Holy Spirit which each and every one of us has been given at baptism, which is still dwelling within our hearts, while it may be covered over with many, many layers of sin, of addiction, of stresses that we don't turn toward God. It is still there, waiting to be released, waiting to be opened up. But we have to merely come. He doesn't ask tremendous amounts just to come. Mary of Egypt came to see the cross. All the saints go to see. They come. They make the effort. And we see that throughout the scriptures. Every one of them, the apostles, made the effort. The apostle Jude would be celebrated today if it wasn't Pentecost. The apostle Jude, being his brother, didn't quite believe in him fully in his early life but later became a fervent follower and after the reception of the Holy Spirit goes as far away even some think as Armenia preaching the gospel and is eventually crucified and shot through with arrows someone who was inspired by the Holy Spirit we don't pray that seriously enough perhaps come Holy Spirit each and every day when we say that prayer O oh, Heavenly King come and abide in us we should believe that it will happen because there's nothing impossible with the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Everything can be changed. The mountains of our pride, of our anger, of our lust, of our greed, of whatever passions we may have can be crushed with the presence of the Holy Spirit. That purifying fire, that quenching and living water, which breaks the hardness of our hearts, which puts dew on that hard ground, cracks it, and allows life to come up through it. We have to say, come Holy Spirit, I was reading St. Basil the Great's ascetical homilies this morning when he was saying that sometimes it is the pastor's job to say things that make him comfortable. And he, he cites St. Paul, who says that he hopes that he brought people to a grief of repentance, a sorrow of repentance, but he spoke quite strongly. The Lord certainly did as well. And unfortunately, I know people don't like me saying these things, but it was the Feast of Pentecost last night, and there was 10 people here at the Mass. That's not right. It's not right. It broke my heart. It's one of the great feasts of the church. The presence of the Holy Spirit coming. The Lord said to wait in the upper room for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And no one was waiting. I know people have reasons. But everybody does not. We have to search our hearts. What is it we want out of life? Frequently in confessions I'll have people ask me, what is it they must do to gain a little bit more in the spiritual life? And I don't tell them anything complicated typically unless it's somebody who's a little more advanced. Just tell them, keep the fast of the church. Say the morning and evening prayer. Say the Jesus prayer. Read your scriptures. Come to church. Love your neighbor. Humble yourself. Go to confession. Just the basics. In this day and age, those basics are a great, great thing. Because there's very little faith upon earth. A great thing. There's very few St. Anthony's and Mary of Egypt's and Tikhon's and the people that cover these walls. To just do the basics is a great thing. He was faithful in, as the Greek actor says, one little thing. Not that much to leave. Just one little thing. Be faithful in things which are great. But those little things, like coming to vigil, those little things, like keeping the fast, can turn up great wellsprings of water from our hearts. And that living water being that grace of the Holy Spirit, those words of God, that word of life, that peace that comes with the Holy Spirit, which does the St. Seraphim tell us, acquire the spirit of peace and thousands around you will find salvation. If we have that living water dwelling within our hearts, if we have that fire which shows that we came, that we came to the fountain, that we came to that fire, that we came to the sea, to cross, that we came to go into the promised land and continue to follow Christ with our cross, he will dwell in our hearts. We will acquire that Holy Spirit, which we already have dwelling within our hearts, but it will flame up. It will gush forth and pour life into the world. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.